So I want to say to all of you, you did it. You made it here. <laughs> and I'm really happy to welcome you. Um, what can I tell you? This is a really interesting program, which is, uh, which is the way things are done in composers now. I think that this is a prime example of the kind of diversity, equity, and inclusion that you see on our stages. And um, I think you're in for a real treat. And uh, enjoy yourselves. And I want to introduce Tanya Leon. actually um, talk about T.J. Anderson, and uh, we're going to see T.J. He is not able to be with us because he's in Atlanta, and he doesn't travel anymore. And uh, last year, he turned 90 years old. So he says, your luck, and uh, let's, uh, let's open the kickoff of the Composers Now Festival. Thomas Jefferson, T.J. Anderson, is a distinguished composer, conductor, professor, and orchestrator. Anderson taught at a number of colleges and universities, including West Virginia State College, Lansom University, Tennessee State University, and Morehouse College. Prior to being named the Austin Fletcher Professor of Music Emeritus at Tufts University, he was composer in residence with Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. Anderson has written over 80 works, ranging from operas and symphonies to chamber and vocal music. His three operas include Soldier's Boy, Soldier, inspired by the Vietnam War effect on the inner city black community, Trimonisha, an orchestration of Scott Joplin's famous ragtime work, and Walker, based on the life of David Walker, a free slave living in Boston in the early 19th century. Anderson is a founder and the first president of the National Black Music Caucus. He was elected to the American Academy of Arts and Letters in 2005 and received awards from the National Association for the Study and Performance of African Music, <coughs> the Rockefeller <coughs> Foundation, and the John Simon Guggenheim Foundation, among others. Tonight, we're pleased to honor T.J. Anderson's contribution to the arts in our nation by awarding him the 2019 Composers Now Visionary Award. Do we have the award? Teacher Philip Bazanson at the University of Iowa, he said, any man or woman in the bathtub can give you a tune. He said, so you're not you're not unique <laughs> as a composer thinking you got a tune. He said, the only difference is that a composer knows what to do with the tune. And, and then he'd always say, da, 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 you know. <laughs> Loads of composers uh, used that in concerto grossos in the Baroque period, but Beethoven knew how to use just that little motive to get the monumental piece that he did. I've written pieces that I thought weren't as successful as others, but I mean, I would never play it safe and write a safe piece. Every piece I write, I try to grow. That willingness to, to constantly search and take that risk and being willing to fail. I mean, I think that's part of being really willing to succeed, too. The sooner you get out on the road and start doing what you want to do, you know, the better off you are. And uh, that won't make you better at it, but at least, you, at least you're on the road to, doing, to making yourself happy. The question of doubt never comes to my mind. <laughs> I mean, you, the reason people doubt is, is they're seeking perfection. I sought to be the best that I could be at a particular time, and still seek, seeking to be that. Martin Luther King had a great sermon that said, how long, not long. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can wait and postpone and, and be indecisive and uh, just goes on and on and on. And, and, and at some point, you have to make a decision, otherwise you become uh, 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 incapable of doing anything. The choice between something that you're good at and something that you love <laughs> it is, 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 is problematic. I would, say, I would say choose what you love. Doing what you want to do is neither a privilege nor a struggle. It's, uh, it's, it's a combination of the two. Um, in any career, there are obstacles. There are ups and downs. It's not about success, quote, in terms of the traditional attitude toward success. The, 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 the goal is really to document who you are and document the culture. That's what all artists do. The day that you say, I know what I want to do, that's the day you die. <laughs> I mean, you stop learning at that point. And uh, um, I have always studied music. I've always studied scores. I've always tried to become a better composer. And to this day, I'm still studying music. And I don't think of myself as, as having arrived at where I want to be. I think it's a, it's a lifelong search. And, and, you, and the great thing about it is that you never know. You never know all the answers. You know what you want to do and you know how to do it, but you don't know how to do it better. I've always felt that you are more than just an artist. You're basically a humanist too. And uh, I remember I had this talk with, with my friend, my best friend is Richard Hunt, the sculptor in Chicago. Richard and I were talking about the riots. So I was saying that if there was a riot, I'd be out there on the front row. <laughs> Richard said, oh no, I said, I would be in my studio creating sculpture about the march. And that struck me right here, <laughs> struck me between the eyes. And I said, that, that, said he said, what he said is that artists do what artists do. until the baby could walk. <laughs> <laughs> and once the baby could walk, then actually she brought us to the uh, Fund for the City of New York, and that's where we have been since then. So uh, this is a way to say thank you, but most of all, to recognize what Laura has done for many, many of us, including myself, helping each other, and every time that she had a position, she was able to bring us in to be part of her family of, of performers and, and colleagues. So this woman here, same thing, but I'm not gonna be saying that much because I mean, she, uh, she's gonna take over from now and uh, say some things okay. about Laura and give her and, and, Well, okay, Laura has been really a visionary as an arts administrator. She's an extraordinary composer and one of the best friends a person can have. And when she started the town hall, she invited me to play a concert there. And I did the music of Conlon Nankara, which was very, very special to me. At Symphony Space, I mean, she did many, many things, but she also introduced me to the wonderful Cassatt Quartet, which you're going to hear later this evening. And as a composer, Laura is amazing. 
Her opera, As One, many of you know, received at least 24 productions in the last two years in the United States, more than any opera by a living composer has ever received. Since then, since she has not, not much to do, she's written three more operas, <laughs> writing three. Um, Today It Rains, Some Light Emerges, and Postville. And she's written the most fantastic quintet for the Cassatt and me, which we're going to play on Saturday. So um, Laura is just amazing, and we're so happy to be able to give her this award.
Okay. <laughs> um, it's been, first of all, thank you. Um, it's been a long time since I wrote the piece. Um, it's called La Lune Noir or Black Moon. It was originally derived from what I considered two worlds that I was existing in. One was the life that I was at Juilliard on Juilliard's campus and studying the works of Schomburg and in, in one specific moment, reflecting on one specific work, Schomburg's Pure Lunaire. And in writing the work, I, I was trying to tell the experience of Americans, black men. Um, it was a very political piece at the time that I wrote it. Um, but one image that till this day still um, burn in my head is an image of, of Barack Obama as the Joker, an image that I saw throughout um, in 2010, um, 2009, um, right after his election. And, and, and then I thought of trying to arrange the work in inhabiting in, in, in sort of this, this life of, of me going to clubs with my friends from Juilliard. I, I went to different clubs. Each club had their own kind of identity. Um, and, and each movement of this work kind of shares that, that reflection. Um, it's, it's actually seven mo um, movement work or this first act. And that particular act, that, that particular um, um, scene is third, is, is, is a scene at a specific club that I would go to called Sound Factory Bar. And in me going to the club, I, I try to kind of conjure um, the images of that, particular, of that particular club and that in particular environment. Now, um, when it comes to Kendra and working with Monster and, and the other dancers, I, I kind of was working with a new, a new type of language, um, trying to work with um, cl a club identity. Um, so so in, in me talking about Black Moon as a piece that, that we, we put together, um, and actually that was, that was actually one of, that was actually the first workshop of that particular work. Um, then came another part of the um, uh, selection, another section of the, 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 the particular act, and that was Washerwoman. Um, and in Washerwoman, um, and I will hopefully ask Kendra to demonstrate, um, is, yeah, <laughs> so, so she can get up and demonstrate the, the, the movement and, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, so, so I'll just add from the movement perspective of the work, um, Monsta and Major, before I came on board, had done a lot of interviews, had a lot of conversations that they had recorded, um, talking just about this idea of maleness, of, of black maleness, of black maleness in show business, and black maleness in the context of like queer identity. So particularly coming out of these, these clubs that, uh, that Major was talking about, um, specifically voguing and all of the, the culture that um, came out of the disco era from, that, from the moment that we were thinking about. And also this idea of, of black minstrelsy and just this uh, toiling between um, the identity of the show and then how some of the show seeps into the reality and this duality of trying to uh, escape and find the realness within but also the, the exaggerated character so Perot, in this instance, um, not really understanding who he really is outside of the context of this character, the party promoter, the, the showbiz, the, the minstrel, um, the tap dancer, for instance. Um, so in, in this section, Washerwoman, that we're gonna, that we're gonna show you is just 
Um, Monster was specific about him being the only male in the, in the cast of dancers, although this is a piece about black maleness, specifically to represent this androgyny of, of queer maleness that uh, happens in club culture. So although Monster is the only male, he's dressed in a kind of androgynous way with heels and furs, and he's surrounded by females, but we're kind of in male light dress with um, slacks and turtlenecks and suspenders, but we still have a feminine element to it. So in this piece, Washer Women, is just the women of the piece really trying to challenge or break down the character of Perot to get him to <laughs> understand who he really is. Okay. So this is going to be um, um, Washer Woman, and this is just one particular selection from that particular work. Okay, that's, that's, that's it. Okay, okay. Um, but... Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so um, it's always incredible to see her dance and um, to move to the, the work that I've written. Um, but it, it, it is essentially, the, the, the first act was, was shown in 2011. Believe it or not, that uh, I still have a second act that I have not yet have done. But um, um, the process of putting together movement for that particular work, um, maybe you can explain just a little bit, um, just about how it was that you came about doing the movement. Um, so Monsta danced with a choreographer named Liz Lerman, who has a toolbox that she shares of different choreographic um, techniques in order to create work. And Monster specifically used a technique called equivalency that Liz Lerman uses, which is taking text, um, which in this instance it was text from the poems from La Lune Noire, text from conversations between Major and Monster, text from interviews that Major had had with other black men with his mom. And um, it's, it's equating one movement to one word. So in my experience, for instance, and then taking that in my experience 
and then abstracting it into something a little bigger. So becomes, and it grows and grows and grows from there. And then also layering in specific movement vocabulary, so modern dance and also voguing as a, um, as a vernacular to pull from. And so that is how we created each phrase along with some structured improv, so really having particular themes and through lines for, for pieces, um, and then kind of growing uh, the movement out of this equivalency, out of the text, and out of our understanding of the arc of the story. Yeah, so, so it was two, two parts of the, the, voc the, the vocabulary, or, or I should say the text was, the original text that Schomburg used, um, the poems by um, um, Ger Gerard, or, or I'm, I'm getting the name wrong because it's French, and I always have a <laughs> yeah. and and then marrying that with the 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 text of Langston Hughes. So having those two particular works married to one another, and being able to express the 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 subject. Hero as told um, the experiences of black men in black America of, 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 of this particular work, and, th and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I have it. Yeah. Albert Jero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So, so that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And thank you. Thank you.
evening. Tanya would like to select the raffle winner. <laughs> <laughs> You have to reach into the back. There you go. Oh my God. <laughs> the winner. <laughs> there are two letters that I'm going to mention. G. W. Really? Really. G. W. Gale. Gale wine. <laughs> section. I also need you not to be sleeping at work. I'm sorry. I was actually, I was just taking a little early lunch break. And I had a little piece of food there. Desk. I swallowed it. Just the moment you appeared. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I've had many names. Some of my friends used to call me spooky. Ha ha. And I had a love who called me some nicknames in a foreign accent. And my love and I, we spoke in baby talk a lot, the ultimate language of love, the atrophied language of love. <laughs> Such as baby animal, little baby animal, big baby animal, black chicken, bird fallen from its nest. And I loved them all, even baby potato. Although it evoked some lumpy and sexless, I said yes, oh, I said yes, I am baby potato. My love and I became bi-coastal, so I was in Hollywood. And I knew something was wrong when my love stopped calling me by these names. I said, look, it's me, baby potato. I'm still here, still lumpy. Oh, 
guided composers now, Amy Fraley. But, uh, we have to actually go team. Mm -hmm. So the team is actually uh, Austin Chaddock. the distinguished mentors, council members, as well as all of the different um, uh, foundations that have actually supported us, you know, the Rockefeller Brothers Show Fund, uh, the Chiefs Water Foundation, and uh, all the foundations that uh, have been listed uh, here. I don't remember them, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't remember them by heart, but uh, without us. Without them, we couldn't be actually here. And that means the ASCA Foundation that have been tremendous supporter to us, the James Water Foundation, the Fund for the City of New York, and the Gordon Getty Foundation, the Du Bois and Dorothy Hybrid, Howard uh, uh, Memorial Foundation, Lower Manhattan Cultural Council, and NYC Department of Cultural Affairs, the Rockefeller Brothers Fund, Volunteers, Lawyers of the Arts, and many individuals such as <coughs> all of you. So welcome to our reception, and this is just the beginning of a fabulous festival that is happening in the five wars of the city of New York, and it's growing, and, uh, and we have a lot of composers here, and uh, we hope that uh, composition will be an art that will be cherished in our nation, and uh, all of our composers 
contributors of our society, bringing the legacy of the sound of this century into the next century. Thank you.